All right, the future of databases is here. And in this video, I'll be sharing everything you need to know. I'm Lucy, an ex AWS solutions architect. And during my time working with businesses in the cloud, I saw one issue come up time and time again. Teams wanted real-time insights to improve their customer experience, but the data infrastructure just couldn't keep up. Why? Because they're spending all their time juggling multiple database systems, building complex pipelines, and waiting hours just to see what's going on with their data. By the time that data lands in the dashboard, it's already out. Outdated. In fact, even a short delay, let's say a few minutes, can significantly decrease the accuracy. This of course negatively impacts user experience. Now, if you're an engineer, developer, or just someone looking to get into tech, it's important for you to not only understand the fundamentals of databases, but also learn about how they're evolving. And so in this video, I'll be sharing with you a little crash course on databases, as well as how modern databases are slowly forming the backbone to a lot of systems we see around us. If you find this type of content helpful, by the way, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more. All right, let's get into it. So databases have been around for a very long time. They've already played an important role in storing and managing data. One early example that some of you might remember is Neopets, a website that lets you adopt virtual animals. Behind the scenes, it used basic databases to store user profiles, game scores, and inventory. I mean, it was simple and fun, but the technology just wasn't built for large scale data. As user demand grew and applications became more complex, these older systems started to show their limits. That's when different types of databases started gaining popularity, especially relational and non-relational databases, each designed for different use cases. Relational databases were used for structured data and transaction systems, things like banking apps, e-commerce orders, or anything related to consistency. Non-relational databases, on the other hand, were better suited for flexibility and scale, handling things like user sessions, logs, or real-time analytics. But managing these systems wasn't always easy, especially as data grew. That's when cloud platforms came in. AWS launched in 2006, and then by 2009, services like Amazon RDS made it easier to manage relational databases in the cloud. Then in 2012, DynamoDB gave developers a way to handle large-scale, high-speed workloads without manual overhead. However, even with all that progress, most teams still follow the same setup. So before we talk about the modern database approach, let me walk you through the traditional setup that many teams are still using today. A lot of businesses still rely on two separate databases, one for powering the application and another one for analytics. For example, they might use something like MySQL to store real-time data, things like user activities or transactions, and then use a tool like Amazon Redshift to run reports or generate insights. But this setup often comes with trade-offs. To generate reports, the data needs to be copied from one system to another, and that takes time. By the time the dashboard updates, the data is already out of date. Even a short delay can make it harder to respond quickly, especially if you're building real-time features like notifications or fraud detection. It also adds more complexity that's not really needed. You've got more tools to maintain, more pipelines to monitor, and more chances for things to break. That's why a lot of teams are now shifting to databases that can do both, transactional and analytical, all in one place. And that's where platforms like Single Store come in, who is also the sponsor of today's video. Single Store is a distributed SQL database management system designed to handle both transactional and analytical workloads in real time. This means you can now use a single system to power your app and run complex analytics. Analytics. What I love about Single Store is that it supports fast data injection, real time queries, and scales horizontally. So even as your data grows over time, your performance doesn't take a hit. It also supports multiple data types like JSON, time series, and vector data. And this is really useful if you're working with more advanced applications like a recommendation engine or Gen AI workloads. Now, here's a few examples of what you can build dashboards that update instantly when new data comes in, real time fraud detection before a transaction completes, an inventory system that always reflect the latest stock levels. But yeah, overall single store simplifies your architecture, helps you reduce costs, and unlocks new features that were previously too complex or too slow to build. The best part is that you can try single store for free using the free tier without needing a credit card. All right, let me show you what the platform looks like and how you can get started. Once you sign up and log in, you'll land on the main dashboard. Right over here, you'll see three quick start actions. Load data, try sample data, and connect to database. If you're new, the easiest way to get started is by clicking on load sample data. You can see now that it's on the query editor. On the left-hand menu, the layout is split into a few key sections. You have ingest data, the query editor, as well as develop, monitoring, and configuration. The monitoring tab, for example, shows you system performance metrics and helps you catch any performance issues early. If you want to load your own data, there's also a few data sources for you to select from. So MySQL, MongoDB, S3, 
or just your local files. If you need help at any time, you can see that there's also a help panel where you can ask questions and send messages. Overall, the interface feels very responsive and beginner friendly. And so whether you're writing queries, loading external data, or just testing things out, everything is accessible from one place. Now, here's a real world example of how single store can help when things go wrong in production. Let's say you're building on AWS. Your app writes to RDS and you're using Glue to sync data into Redshift for dashboards. One day, the dashboard stops updating. You end up checking RDS, debugging Glue jobs, and running queries in Redshift just to figure out what went wrong. With single store, you'll be able to easily notice performance issues, diagnose the query, and fix the problem. And that's actually because the infrastructure can be spun up on AWS by default. This helps you stay within the ecosystem with less setup and overhead. Okay, at this point, we've looked at how single store handles real-time queries, but you might be surprised to hear that there's also a lot of advanced features built into the platform in case you need it. For example, you can use single store pipelines to bring real-time data from sources like S3 or Kafka without needing external ETL tools. There's also notebooks, which lets you explore and analyze your data directly in the browser using SQL or Python. And if you're working on AI use cases, single store supports vector functions for semantic search and recommendation systems. It handles time series data as well, which is great for tracking events, logs, or sensor streams. And if all of that made you curious about single store and you want to try it out for yourself, you can head to the link in the description below to get started. Now, for the final part of the video, you might be wondering, what does the future of databases look like for the next five years? What do I need to know as someone learning cloud or working in tech? Well, from the way things are going, we're going to see a continued shift towards unified systems, where one database can handle transactions, analytics, and even AI workloads without needing multiple tools stitched together. We'll also see more databases supporting things like vector search and hybrid workloads, not just for the big tech companies, but also startups and smaller teams as well. And with the rise of AI, developers can lean more on databases that can natively support large-scale data ingestion, unstructured formats, and fast querying, all without having to build complex pipelines. So overall, remember that databases of the future won't just store data. Understanding how modern databases work will help you build faster and more scalable applications. And the best way to learn is by trying out new platforms and building small projects with real-time data. All right, this brings us to the end of this video. Please let me know in the comments if you found it helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.